So our first speaker today um, is Konstantin Savenkov. He is a CEO and co-founder of Intento Incorporated. Um, in this talk, he will share insights into the cloud AI landscape. He will talk about the challenges large enterprises have procuring and implementing hybrid AI solutions and how the Intento AI platform helps some of the biggest companies solve them. So welcome, Constantine. Uh, I'm, I have some issues with my voice today, so I think I'll be good for 15 minutes. Uh, so, um, so we're one of the Skyda companies with part of the first funded cohorts, and also we are still doing. And um, what we do, we help the companies to procure and deploy AI. So we help them to find the lost AI vendors right for them and to put them in production. And I would, I would start uh, mostly, I'm not going to sell here, so I mostly will be talking about the AI landscape. Um, and in the end, if I have time, I will not do this at all. So, uh, you know, the, the artificial intelligence stack is pretty deep today. And all these advances are possible only because we can build shoulders of other others, right? Um, however, uh, you, need, you need to master it that deep only in some specific cases when you build some core AI technology or something which you can do in-house using some framework on your data, things like AI, job prediction, things In a vast majority of other cases related to cognitive services, um, no one builds an in-house, well, except maybe Amazon, Google, Facebook. Uh, just because you need all the data in the world for them, you need substantial um, investments both to hand time investments, you have to spend lots of time. So mostly companies get from someone, they get some baseline model, and they have a way to improve this model based on their own data. There is plenty of uh, systems to, for that. But we call this simple things you can do with data, we call them intents, that's why intent It's not intents like in Intent detection and chatbots, it's different types of intents, like speech transcription or translation. And um, more than 200 vendors, actually, much more than that, uh, many thousands of models. Uh, and you can discover them in different places. There are certain API marketplaces, um, like maybe a Rapid API, uh, this program, programmable web. Uh, there's major AI vendors such as Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and others. Um, but then also there are lots of indie vendors which excel at creating data for some so for solving some specific niche problem and um, building models of this data. That for example, some time ago, um, a small German company called DeepL, they took about the same data set Google has bilingual data crawl from this and they have integrated it for certain languages like German, French, and Spanish, and they become better than Google Translate in those languages because they, they decided to focus on some niche. So overall we we identified I think more than um, one hundred intents. I'm not sure to what number it sums up, but it should be one hundred. And we classify them by type of content you may uh, process, like is it text, image, audio, or video, and by what you do with this content. Do you do some information extraction for this content, or classification, or uh, transformation, um, or something, something else? Uh, for example, in uh, text, you can do what's for this? Yeah, small, small screen and very small font. So like examples of text extraction is entity extraction, uh, classification, for example, sentiment analysis when you classify text by sentiment, uh, transformation, machine translation. And about the similar, um, um, sim similar typology, we may have text for image analysis and for audio and for video. 
for example, in case of uh, natural language processing, there is around 23 different intents, such as uh, keyword extraction, uh, intent extraction, uh, linguistic analysis, content moderation, uh, machine translation, and summarization. And for every of them, was on average, I think, from 15 to 20 different vendors which provide pre trained models. Uh, so then, what, what, what things we may find there? First is um, what type of models are provided. So, models may be generic, meaning it's a pre trained model which is good for in general, general purpose data. For example, um, Google Translate out, the, out of the box is a generic translation model. It's, it's not suited to certain niches, just one size fits all. Then, um, um, next level is project models, but for some specific niches. For example, um, in Microsoft Translate, you can get project models for business or IT or conversation translations. If you know how to find them, it's not, it's not easy, but it's possible. And much like, um, um, for example, in Microsoft, you may find also pre trained models for um, different medical tasks. And on, on Amazon, I think, medical comprehend, compre, Amazon comprehend, general purpose model, and medical comprehend is for uh, medical tests. So then, sort of, uh, the whole topic is domain adaptation where uh, you can um, take this baseline model and uh, use your own data, typically about three degrees of magnitude less than you would need to train the model from scratch to adapt this model to your specific problem. Uh, it's not really, I think transfer learning, it's not really training, it's more like you give it like a cloth to a dog to sniff and understand what actually you're doing. Um, there are different approaches to that. One of the approach is data augmentation. When you upload your data to the uh, AI vendor, and in their stock repository, they find similar data. So they augment your data with their data. They have substantially large enough data set to train this deep learning model. That's one approach. Um, second approach is transfer learning. And typically, it's employed by large companies, such as Google, because uh, it's expensive. And then what's uh, a quite hot topic for the services is dynamic adaptation. When you're not doing sort of training on chunk of data, when the model produces some result, you get feedback on this result from human, and you can push the feedback back, just one data point, to improve the model. So that if you have some human in the loop scenario, the model is continuously improving. But that's quite popular in uh, Machine translation, when a web person edits text and pushes back to the model, the model incorporates the second right away. Then, um, in terms of the, well, I think it's a pretty large topic, I would just skip that. <laughs> so, um, basically, um, so what I want to say here, um, yes, the, the quality is very fragmented. So. Those large vendors, they're not tapped for data they use to train the models, right? And the performance of these models for your case depends on how your data is similar to that data. And you have no idea how it's similar. So the only way here is to try it on the data. And when you do, you see that the space is super fragmented. Like, uh, we have uh, lots of focus on translation, that's why I'm drawing examples from translation. If you look at that, I will show you. It's, it's very fragmented. Then, if you use this domain adaptation to improve modern new data, you see that learning curves are different. So it's like another dimension of difference. You build on the top of this baseline model, and maybe the model starts high, but it does really improve on your data. Maybe there is another model which starts lower, but it learns faster and it doesn't, it, it flats out later. So then, um, when you train, you use some noisy real world data. And one way, one way to do that is to invest in human clinic for this data. Another way, uh, some of the AI vendors, they provide services for automated data cleaning, which are involved in this training. So if you have noisy data, it may happen that 
some company will work, some vendor will work better for you because they're better automatically to clean the tools. Uh, yeah, and um, in order to figure out which model is right for a specific case, there are different approaches. Uh, two main ones is a reference by evaluation, when you have uh, some golden standard data and you just uh, compare model output of the data. It has lots of problems, including that in many, for example, NLP tasks, there is no really single golden reference. You may have five different translations, each of them is perfect. Uh, another approach is human evaluation, where you uh, just give out humans and they rate it. And the problem with that is that it's too expensive. And we, we sort of, at our company, found a way to combine them to make some late work using algorithms and then give humans some small sample to analyze to draw a good decision. Um, so, example, like in machine translation, um, there is uh, around 30 vendors, it's a bit outdated, so I read more, uh, which work with more than 14,000 language words, translating text from one language to another, and if you pick uh, the most popular language pairs, you see that in order to get the best quality, you have to combine uh, nine different vendors, depending on the language pair. I purposefully removed brand names from here. Uh, you might find them in our public version reports. And last half year, it changed. Oh, it's not last half year, but last half year, the same happened. Its uh, leadership changed for about um, half of the language pairs. So mm -hmm. it's very dynamic. Then uh, there's domain adaptation. So you have those uh, different best baseline models. And then when you load your data, depending on the size of your data, those different vendors improve differently. So that's about cloud landscape. And um, um, the problem we solve at Intent is that uh, companies fail a lot uh, adopting AI, even if this AI is available in the cloud. Because, oh, yeah, because uh, for them it's super hard to procure those technologies since you have to evaluate like 20 different vendors on your data before you decide which to work with. And that's not how enterprises procure software. Enterprises typically they want to select one vendor and only after that try this vendor. And second, uh, it's hard to deploy. Because um, um, enterprises use some integration solutions with standard connectors to those solutions, which work well for one-to-one -one, uh, situations when you need to connect your ERP system to your IT desk or something like that. But when you need to connect like five AI vendors with five internal systems, uh, this quickly turns into a mess like that. So you have to build all those peer-to-peer -peer integrations on top of your enterprise service bus. And that's actually, we, we solve both those problems. So we provide a solution for like streamlined procurement of AI, where we provide a single interface to all those AI vendors, and we provide some professional tools for data cleaning, model, tra model training, and model scoring, and we have partnerships with all vendors to handle that. And also we provide what we call Enterprise AI Hub, uh, which encapsulates all this complexity so as related to dealing with multiple third party systems and can be, uh, because of that it provides very simple and simple API to all those systems so it can be easily plugged into all those enterprise integration systems. Yeah, and we, we work with companies like IKEA, uh, Agile, that, that sizes. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, thanks. I'm almost. Okay. I'm done.